welcome to this week's cruise chat. I'm Kathleen Penner, owner of Lumia Sunshine Travel, and today I am joined by Alina, and Alina is from Adventure Canada, as you can see, and we're going to be going over their Iceland circumnavigation. And uh, I know that's a great big word, the circumnavigation. It basically means that they just go all around on the circle of Iceland, and I'm really looking forward to this presentation. I've met with you, oh, I believe, what, two or three times I've met with you, and one time with your boss as well. So we've got a couple of uh, videos if anybody wants to look back and check out some of those, but make sure that you tune into this one because I'm excited about learning more about Iceland. So over to you. Great, thank you so much for the warm introduction, Kathleen. And thank you for the opportunity to present today. Mm -hmm. And hello everyone. And thank you for joining our webinar, Iceland Circumnavigation. This is with Plenty of Sunshine Travel and Adventure Canada. My name is Alina Chang and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a business development and account manager with Adventure Canada, working with partners in Ontario, Quebec and Atlantic Canada. I started working with Adventure Canada in July of 2020 and I'm so excited because I'm scheduled to take my first trip with the company this summer. So can't wait. <laughs> And I'm really excited to share all of the wonderful aspects of an Adventure Canada trip with you today. So you all get to see what I'm looking forward to this summer when I get to travel. Fabulous. I can't yeah. It's so, so nice to get out there and to see the world again. And I'm so glad that you guys are back in the waters and you're open. I mean, you weren't actually out of the water, but touring and seeing different things. And, and I'm excited that you're able to go soon. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're really happy to be back and can't wait to set sail this summer. Um, so yeah, I'm, as everyone knows, Kathleen here is very knowledgeable and ready to help you book your next, next trip with Adventure Canada. Um, I know you're going to feel really confident when and taken care of when you book with her. So thank you. Thanks, Kathleen. Let's hard. get started. Uh, you know, I always try and put my clients first in everything that we do and make sure that they're going on the cruise that's the best for them. So that's exciting. Absolutely. Uh, and we love working with you too. Well, thank you. Okay, so I'll share a little bit of background information about Adventure Canada. So we're a Canadian small ship and expedition cruise operator. Our office is in Mississauga, Ontario, and we visit destinations in Europe, Atlantic Canada, the Arctic and Antarctica. Nice. We also visit some other destinations in between, such as Haida Gwaii on Canada's West Coast, as well as Panama and Costa Rica. Hmm, nice. One of the key differences between Adventure Canada and other expedition cruise companies is we are a true family owned and operated business in every sense of the term. So pictured here, we have our CEO, Cedar Swan on the left, MJ Swan, our director of business development is in the middle and Alana Swan, our director of product is on the right. After working with Adventure Canada for almost two years now, I can confirm that the feeling of family translates into everything we do, whether it's in the office, on the ship or in the communities we visit, all of our staff, guests, and crew are a part of the Adventure Canada family. Oh, wonderful. I love that small family feel and, and just knowing that they have such a vested interest in the company because you know their parents started it or even grandparents or what have you, depending on when it started, and they wanna pass that on to their children. So you know that they're gonna take care of the company and keep it running the best that they can. Absolutely. And yeah, they've been in business since 1987 when their father, Matthew Sr. started the company. So it really is a stewardship and a labor of love. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that I'm so proud to work at Adventure Canada is our regenerative tourism plan. So I don't know how familiar everyone is, but sustainable travel really focuses on trying to keep the state of the world the same as it currently is. Mm -hmm. And regenerative travel goes beyond sustainable and works to improve destinations because of tourism and not in spite of it. So to do this, we're taking, undertaking several initiatives to leave the places we touch and the world in a better place. We're looking at innovative ways to run our operations, support our partners, protect the natural world and value people. And I've put together a bit of a list here that you can mm -hmm. see. Um, lots of different ways that we can do this and a really strong plan for how we're looking to really improve things and make sure that this beautiful, beautiful world is going to be here for us to discover for many years to come. Wonderful. That's really good to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take a moment to talk about who our travelers are. We have a wide variety of people joining us on our expeditions. 
And our trips are for everyone. I like to say that we run them in a choose your own adventure style. So what I mean by this is you can make the trip as active or as leisurely as you would like. I know some people get a little intimidated when they hear, you know, expedition and adventure and they think, oh, but, you know, I want a vacation. Um, You can definitely take it easy. Nobody's going to make you take the strenuous Mm -hmm. hike unless you want to, right? Right. Yeah. And that's really good for people like myself who have limited mobility. Um, I I don't know if you realize I've mentioned a few times in my cruise chest, I do walk with a cane when it's a long distance. Um, So sometimes when I, I, you know, you see these things and you're like, ah, you can't do expedition. You absolutely can, even though you have limited mobility, because they make sure that they have different activities that tailor to what your needs are. And I think that's one of the great things about cruising and about expedition cruising as well. Absolutely. And uh, we have people all along the way to help you where you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, My best advice is to just say, like, don't let your um, your ideas of what you think it's going to be hold you back from actually doing it and experiencing it, because we're always there to lend a helping hand and we'll always do the best that we can to make everything easy and comfortable for you. Wonderful. And I mean, traveling is life changing. So don't think that you can't travel. Um, so get out there and, and just, just go and enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. And I would say that another thing that some people kind of let hold them, let them hold back on is, um, age. So we always say that age is just a number right. and we've had guests as young as babies and people who are as old as in their nineties, join us on our expedition. So okay. if your heart is set on it, come join us. Mm-hmm. The most important thing about our clients is to have that adventurous spirit and a curious nature. Um, Our clients are lifelong learners. They love meeting people from all walks of life. So if this sounds like you, let me show you what your trip with Adventure Canada will look like. (laughs) Our home for these expeditions is the 198 passenger Ocean Endeavor. And the vessel is 137 meters long and 35 meters tall. It's a very stable ship because it is an ice class ship. And specifically, it has a class 1B ice hull. So what that means is extra thick steel around the hull means it sits bottom heavy and it handles times of rougher weather with ease. Perfect. We spend our time on board enjoying everything that the ship has to offer. The ship has many amenities, including a gym, heated saltwater pool, hot tub, two saunas, stretching classes, as well as a full spa offering massages and more. Nice. We have three lounges, three bars, one library, and one dining room. The kitchen can accommodate those who have dietary needs, restrictions, and allergies, as long as we're told of them ahead of departure, because sometimes we go to those remote regions and it can be hard to change the plan after. So the more information we have ahead of departure, the better. Oh, that's, that's true. Very, very true. (laughs) Yeah. So we always source and prepare local provisions along the way Mm -hmm. for our travelers to enjoy traditional dishes in the areas that we travel to. Nice. We have 10 different categories of cabins available at ranging from shared dormitory style, interior, exterior porthole, picture window, and suites, uh, which include options with matrimonial beds. All categories have ensuite washrooms, so no worries there. And we also have a large number of cabins with no single supplement fee for travelers who are going solo. And that way they don't have to pay the additional cost for traveling by themselves. So yeah, super great. If you're looking to travel by yourself, but you don't want to share a room with someone else, Mm -hmm. this is the program for you. And if you aren't sure which cabin category is the right one for you, I'm sure Kathleen, you're more than welcome to help everyone find out which is the best fit. And I know you'll do an excellent job at that. Thank you. The ship has extensive spaces out on deck for everyone to enjoy the outdoors, the passing views, and get some shots of the incredible ice, wildlife, and landscapes we see as we sail. Beautiful. Yeah. There's so many cool things to see. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Wow. That looks like something, yeah, I'd want to take, I was just about to say that, I'd want to take a Zodiac and go right in there, yeah, and then yeah. That's, the picture, that's what you've got, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. I mentioned that Adventure Canada's preferred method of travel is expedition cruising. Expedition cruising is not like a typical large cruise ship because expedition travel is characterized by its dynamic and fluid nature, 
So while we have an intended itinerary for all expeditions, we do not guarantee that we follow it exactly as planned. And that is part of the adventure. I know some people get a little bit confused by that and, you know, they question why we, we run things that way. Um, but the reason is because we could change course due to um, a unique wildlife sighting, for example. So we can't plan when we're going to see wildlife out in the open. And that is part of the spirit of expedition travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'd rather that you do show up in the port that you're supposed to go to a half an hour late or so on, if it means I got to see the whale or exactly. you know, some of the other things. So it's nice that you kind of veer off and you do what the what the guests and the clients want to see and then go back to your regularly, regularly scheduled programming kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we deliver a program that provides our guests with authentic and immersive experiences in the destinations that we're visiting. So the main focus of each of our expeditions is the destination and not the vessel. The biggest difference between a cruise and an expedition cruise is that a cruise focuses on the ship, whereas the key to an expedition cruise is all about getting you off the ship. So we have three, yeah, three different types of excursions Mm -hmm. and they're all included in your, on, in your tour price on all of our tours. Okay. Okay, first up, we have Zodiac Cruising. Mm -hmm. Zodiacs are extremely safe and maneuverable, and they have shallow drafts. So they allow us to navigate within shallow inlets, fjords, bays, and coves to get up close to geology, wildlife, and ice while maintaining respectful distances. It has that open design that puts us right in the middle of the action so you can be truly immersed in nature. The next type of excursion is community visits. Mm -hmm. This is where we conduct tours of towns and villages where local guides will show us around. It's extremely important for Adventure Canada to always use local guides in the places that we travel to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they know it best, they really do. Absolutely. And like what better way of experiencing someone's home than by having that person show you around themselves. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And during community visits, passengers can be welcomed to cultural presentations and informative lectures. Um, We may even be invited to take part in traditional games, dancing and food tasting. So lots to do during a community visit. Mm -hmm. And the best part is that since we have that fleet of Zodiacs, we're able to access smaller towns that might not have road access and are only accessible by sea. So it really gives us so much freedom to be able to use the Zodiacs. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. Because mm-hmm. you can get right into to spots that you just wouldn't get to by land. And you get yeah. to experience uh, their, their culture much better. Exactly. Yeah. Those hard to reach places that you wouldn't normally see if you were doing a drive it yourself kind of trip. Right. The third type of excursion we offer is expedition landing. Mm-hmm. So for days that offer hiking opportunities, we'll execute various difficulty based excursions determined by length, elevation, and terrain. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are options for everyone, including, you know, if you really want to do the strenuous hike, you can do that. Or there's like a middle ground and intermediate level. There's the leisurely hikes or even just a themed walk. So if all you want to do is stretch your legs and just walk along the beach, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. And we also have station interpretation sites. So we have topics like archaeology, history, and geology. There's always something to do, and there's something for everyone. Perfect. Adventure Canada ensures education has a front row seat on all of our expeditions. Mm -hmm. A key component to our expeditions is our expedition team. These are specialists who are renowned leaders and experts in their respective fields, including topics such as climate change, um, conservation, Indigenous teachings, and languages. Yeah. As part of our mandate, we have at least one expedition team member for every seven passengers on board the ship. This is a very high ratio of expedition team members to passengers, and that allows for those intimate one-on-one and small group opportunities based on your individual interests. Mm -hmm. So our expedition team members, they might be sitting with you at dinner, so you can just pick their brain casually over dinner. Um, They'll be doing presentations or workshops like you can see here. Um, Lots of opportunities. They might be um, leading your hike. You never know, um, the opportunities to talk to them are endless. So as I mentioned, so much learning happens on our trips. 
Yeah, that's really good because I'm I'm not going to get what kind of ologist it is, but say that you're walking along and somebody picks up, you know, a little flower or a leaf and they can totally explain to you why that that's unique to that area and, and fill you in. So that's kind of nice to have them on your short excursion with you as well. Absolutely. And we love to provide a diversity of programming on our trips. So um, there's lots of varied topics from photography to marine biology to history. Like I said, something for everyone. Great. Yeah. Cool. All right. So our Iceland circumnavigation expedition is a magical itinerary where we sail around the country. Seeing Iceland by ship is a unique way of experiencing everything that this breathtaking place has to offer. I know a lot of people who visit Iceland and they only get to see like the southern half of the island and they probably stick to a golden circle tour. While those are great, when we travel around Iceland by ship, we get to see those regions and areas of the country that are off the beaten path. They're harder to get to if you would do it on your own by car, as I was saying. Yeah. Um, so just so many opportunities here to see things that a lot of people will never get to see in their lifetime. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I'm looking at some of those names and, oh my goodness, I could never pronounce half of them. Wow. Uh, I know they are a bit of a, yeah. a bit of a mouthful sometimes, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> no worries if you don't get it right. It's, yeah. You can see it. We know what you're talking about. So that it works out well. Okay. Sounds good. Um, All right, so starting and ending in Reykjavik, this 10-day itinerary is filled with the incomparable natural beauty of the Scandinavian country. So Reykjavik is Iceland's capital, and it is the most northern capital of a sovereign state. There is actually one nuke in Greenland, um, which is not a sovereign state, so nuke is only a few kilometers further north than Reykjavik. Okay. Yeah, and for a capital city, it has a bit of a smaller population of around 123,000 people. Wow. So yeah, a little bit on the smaller side, but it's definitely hustling and bustling. Um, this is the economic and legislative center in Iceland. Okay. Today, it is a modern and beautiful city with a unique mix of old and new. Beautiful. So we're going to have an optional walking tour of the old harbor, and then we board the ship in mid-afternoon. So I know the, the walking tour is optional, but I definitely recommend taking it and soaking in as much as you can while you're here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's always a treat to be out on deck when you're departing on a voyage so that you can catch beautiful views like this. Mm-hmm. Wow. My goodness. All right. So after we set sail up first, we'll be visiting the Snellfanes Peninsula, which includes beautiful mountains, caves, craters, and waterfalls. This region is actually the setting for the Jules Verne book, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Oh, that's yeah, neat. and I, I think, think maybe a good thing to know. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. cool, right? And I think like you could probably see why it just feels so like magical looking at these landscapes. And it looks so remote. And yet, you know, that there is still a town nearby, but it just looks so wide open and beautiful. Mm-hmm. I would say that Iceland is very, very good at preserving their, their natural resources and the nature that they're surrounded by. Absolutely. And what is the average temperature when you're there in July? I see people wearing coats. Is it a little bit cooler? Um, that's a good question. I would say I don't have a good um, exact number for you, but it's, yeah. it's definitely the warmest period to be there. Okay. Um, but it will probably never be like how we're used to it in Canada, where it gets to be like 35 and sweltering hot. It's going to be much more mild than that. (laughs) But you know what? That's good because you don't want to be sweating a lot and you want to be able to, you know, stay out and not be getting a sunburn or anything like that. So that works out. You can escape in July. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The jewel of the Snellfelnes Peninsula is Snellfelsjökull National Park which is named after the glacier-capped volcano at the end of the peninsula. This national park is one of four in Iceland and is where we will explore the highlights of the peninsula. So this is a great picture just to show how like vast the landscape is. And Mm -hmm. it's just, it's just so, um, there's so much texture there. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on to the West Fjords is Mm -hmm. Dinyande Waterfall. It is 100 meters high and it's 30 meters wide, 
with our zodiacs, we can actually land at the shore where the river runs into the seas. And I don't know if you can see, but there's like a tiny person just at the base of the waterfall there. That'll oh, give you some, yes. yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. An idea of how big this is. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. I wouldn't even know that. I thought it was like a stick, but that's a real person. <laughs> so that is a very tall waterfall. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like I said, we get to get up close to the waterfall to take mm -hmm. in all of its beauty. And I, Dinian Day is arguably one of the most picturesque waterfalls in Iceland. It's just yes. so stunning. Very much so. Wow. So the whole itinerary of this trip is great for birders. Mm -hmm. This region in particular, the West Fjords, has incredible bird watching opportunities. So the West Fjords are home to a number of seabird colonies. I'm going to list a few off, um, but if you don't know them, that's okay. They're not all that common. There are Murs, Guillemots, Razorbills, Northern Fulmars, Kittawakes, Gannets, and Puffins. <laughs> Ooh, I've heard of Puffins. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's really neat. And they're just yeah. in that area. Wow. Yes, yeah, there's just so many opportunities to see them in this area. Mm -hmm. They like to nest on these vertical cliff faces that you see here. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do that is actually to avoid their predators. Smart. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, you can imagine uh, there's a, uh, there must be some, some difficulties to breeding in these kind of um, locations mm -hmm. <laughs> on the cliff there. Absolutely. Okay, moving into the North Iceland region, Grimsey is an island approximately uh, five square kilometers in size. Mm -hmm. And this is actually what makes Iceland an Arctic nation because Grimsey is intersected by the Arctic Circle. There's a small town on the island of the same name where there are 100 inhabitants and a bustling fishing harbor, which is still the most northerly in Iceland. Wow, 100, goodness. Yeah. So here we'll go ashore in the town and hike to the Arctic Circle mm -hmm. and take a Zodiac cruise. Nice. Yeah, there's actually a monument to the Arctic Circle here, mm -hmm. and it's a large granite sphere, and they place it in the exact location of the Arctic Circle. Um, but I've been told that it actually needs to be adjusted every year because the Arctic Circle moves due to the Earth's shifting axial tilt. Interesting. I, I know. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, all these fun facts today. <laughs> wow. Neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would be cool to sort of say I'm in the Arctic Circle and then I'm not. And you just take a couple <laughs> steps and play around with that. Yeah. One foot in, one foot out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this region has a great opportunity, like I said, for birds. Um, and this Grimsey um, has I, what I think is the cutest bird of all, which is the puffins. Mm -hmm. um, so Grimsey has lots of colonies of puffins that we can get a good, a good look at. And I've been told that they're very, um, they're very curious. And I got a lot of pictures too. I could have included one, sorry, I will next time, of um, photographers trying to take a picture of the puffin, but like puffins will just walk right up to them and say hello. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And you're like, no, 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 stay back because you're trying to get your, your picture. Yeah. Yeah. They're just curious. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's good that they don't fear man. So they know that, you know, you're, you're there to protect them and you're not going to do anything to them. So that's really great. Exactly. Yeah. That's and Iceland has a lot to offer for people who are interested in human history as well. So we'll get to visit the Siglifjordr Folk Museum which has an incredible display of the importance of music to Icelandic culture. So this museum has an interactive presentation showing the importance of the sea and fishing to the development of this region that incorporates song, dance, history, and demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's a really cool place. It is. Yeah, that's neat. I like all the colors of the homes. Yeah, it's such a picturesque kind of setting yeah yeah the red really contrasts with the, all the greenery around it's mm -hmm. beautiful yeah okay we set sail down a fjorder overnight mm -hmm. um, but there are some really great whale watching opportunities in this fjord in the early hours of the morning so if you can get yourself out of bed you might see humpback and minky whales that frequent this fjord mm -hmm. and at the time of year that we're going to be sailing you may also see fin, sperm, orcas, and northern bottlenose whales. 
Oh, wow. Lots of options. Yeah. Northern Iceland is a great place for whale watching in the summer, and we're always keeping our eyes peeled for them. Yeah. The next morning, we arrive in Akureyri, mm -hmm. the second largest town in Iceland. This is a great town to explore on your own, and it's filled with restaurants, cafes, and over a dozen museums. Mm, wow. Next, yeah, next to the church of Akureyri is actually the Botanical Gardens, mm -hmm. and it's claimed to be the most northerly botanical garden, which is just shy of the Arctic Circle. And there are over 7,000 species contained in the gardens over nearly 10 acres of land. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. And then in addition to exploring the town of Akureyri, we will also set off on a journey to the interior of Iceland. And we'll get to witness some of the volcanic activity visible from the surface. So here you can see the boiling of sulfuric mud in Namaskar. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Namaskar. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a short ride away from Akureyri. It's mm -hmm. set in a beautiful background and we get to travel with a vul volcanologist mm -hmm. who will be on hand to interpret everything for us. So oh, we'll get to learn cool. how, yeah, learn how the energy is used and mm -hmm. how it presents itself um, on land. Oh, wow. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Okay. So for those who want to see whales, Husavik is a very good place for it. This is a town of only approximately 2,300 people, and it is one of the best whale watching locations worldwide. So common to this bay are humpback whales, and they're, they're known to be quite showy, so they like to, you know, come up to the surface a lot. And then you can also spot potentially blue whales here, which are, are of course, the largest animal ever known, mm -hmm. um, and they do frequent these waters quite often. Mm -hmm. Okay, hmm. this is a town that I'm going to try and say their name correctly. Oh, Seda Spearish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said that right. It's just like from the pictures, it's one of the prettiest towns in Iceland. It's nestled in a deep valley at the end of a beautiful fjord. It is a friendly community. They have strongholds in the arts. As you can see here, we've got a nice rainbow boardwalk. It's so beautiful here. And there are numerous places to purchase handicrafts from the local artists. Um, something else that's really interesting about this place is that um, the architecture here is kind of different. So there are many timber homes that are actually prefabricated and they were brought over from Norway during the days of herring in Iceland. Oh, well, that's neat. Yeah, so it's got a bit of a different kind of uh, a different cityscape, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I love that you can buy the handcrafted items because, you know, you're supporting them the local economy as opposed to items that they've gotten shipped in from other countries. And it's just something that's going to sit on your shelf and not mean anything. But a handmade item is just a phenomenal thing to bring back from a, a cruise. Exactly. I always try to pick up art from wherever I go. Mm -hmm. And so this would be an excellent place for that. Yeah. A short ride away is an independent nature reserve called mm -hmm. Skolans. It is a 3,000 acre reserve containing an ecosystem, an ecosystem excuse me, mm -hmm. and um, the ecosystem is representative of East Iceland. So here we'll get to visit with our onboard naturalist and we'll be on the lookout for wildlife such as um, black-tailed godwit, red-necked cephalorope, I think is how you say it. Um, golden plovers, merlins, and gyro falcons. Mm -hmm. And those are all, those are all birds. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So that's what you'll see up in the sky. And then mm -hmm. on land, you will get to see reindeer, Arctic fox, and minx. Beautiful. Yeah, next we'll stop at mm -hmm. Fjar Solon. <laughs> I think I said that correctly. Fjar I'm sure you're doing just fine with that <laughs> idea either, so... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Fjord Salon, a glacial lagoon in Iceland, which is located on the southern end of a glacier. And this is an outlet for the glacier Fjord Jöskut, mm -hmm. um, which extends all the way to the lagoon surface where large icebergs break away from the ice cap and fall into the water below. Mm -hmm. So this is just an excellent location to get up close to the ice mm -hmm. in our fleet of Zodiac. So this is going to be one of those locations where you're going to want to dress a little bit warmer. It's not as warm as the south of Iceland. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, amazing how close you can get. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing too, is that you can't really get like a hundred percent up close to glaciers and that kind of thing. Cause you just, you just never know. You gotta be safe, right? You gotta, you gotta be within good distance just in case something tumbles off. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to be that close when it's calving because it doesn't give yeah. you that much notice. So you can't really beeline it out of there, but, uh, yeah, but exactly. you're still close enough that you can get some gorgeous shots and experience that too. Exactly. Yeah. On the last stop of our voyage, we're going to be greeted into the stunning harbor of Hei Mai, which is on our visit here, we'll get to um, arrange a tour of the community and the island. And there's an emphasis on the Eldfell volcano. Mm -hmm. So Hei Mai is famous for the eruption that took place at this volcano in 1973. Mm -hmm. And it actually destroyed much of the town, the farms and the livestock, unfortunately. Um, and the only way that they got things a little bit under control was they actually sprayed seawater onto the lava here. And that managed to save the town's main amenity, which is the harbor. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And you can actually still see the aftermath that's visible from the town. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to visit Eldfeld Volcano as well as the museum. Um, and now there's a town there of approximately 4,000 people. And then it's, it's got this beautifully backdropped um, location with a great place to reflect on the last 10 days that we've experienced on our sailing. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. From here, we'll also offer a Zodiac cruise of Hamai. It's just outside of the harbor and there are these amazing caves and cliffs. Um, and the cliffs are surrounded with puffin colonies. So another opportunity there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, lots to do here and we'll really make the most out of our last stop. Yeah. Wow. That's gorgeous. Yeah. So Absolutely cool. Gorgeous. I, I kind of feel like that man in the Zodiac, they're going look around like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. And then as mentioned, we'll end our expedition in the same city as we started, which is Reykjavik. And if you get the chance, I recommend spending a little extra time in the city after the trip ends, just to really make the most of it. Yes, absolutely. You're there. You've already got the airfare. Enjoy it. Just spend a couple of days and, and just check out the town and their uh, sulfur springs, I think it is, or like their, their warm outdoor um, baths with uh, the volcanic, um, you know, making the water very, very warm. I'm kind of losing what I'm trying to say, but uh, it's just stunning. It's a really gorgeous area. Yeah, so beautiful. Thermal bass, that's the word, sorry. Yep. All right, and this concludes our Iceland circumnavigation itinerary. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have any other additional questions about what you can expect on this trip, uh, please contact Kathleen because she'll be able to help you. Wonderful, yes, that was amazing. And thank you for putting all that together. It's just so stunning to see all of those places that, like you said, you can only get to by boat. Um, and it's just so, so great to be able to cruise and, and go all the way around it instead of just hitting Reykjavik and then heading out. Um, so yeah. it's, you get to explore their culture and, and their worlds a little bit more. So thank you for putting that together. My pleasure. And um, I'm just going to go really quickly over a couple of other um, maps. Sure. just so that people can get like a bit of an idea of where else we go in the world. Um, so here's an overview of our 2023 European sailing season. We do two departures of Scotland slowly. Um, and then we'll sail from Scotland over to um, Iceland on our North Atlantic saga. That one stops at the Faroe Islands, if you're interested in the Faroe Islands. And that's when we begin our circumnavigation of Iceland. So um, from Iceland, we'll be going over to the Arctic. Mm -hmm. So we go, yeah, we go from Iceland to Greenland. That's a really cool trip because it gets to see, you get to see three different coasts of Greenland on that one. And you get to experience Iceland as well. Um, and then we have two high Arctic explorer departures. And we also will then do our signature experiences, um, the Northwest Passage. So we go into and out of the Northwest Passage. And we'll travel down the coast from Greenland down to Labrador, mm -hmm. and that one ends in St. John's. And finally, we finish our sailing season with a circumnavigation of Newfoundland in the fall of 2023. Wonderful. And you may even, I think October it might be done, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, for sure in Newfoundland, they have the beautiful fall colors. And that's yes. such a nice thing to see. A lot of my clients are from the um, the 
coast where they don't really see it. You know, they're from Los Angeles and, and they don't have the leaves changing. So for them to come and explore that, that's a really, really cool thing to see that we take for granted because I mean, we see it all the time, right? Yeah. Um, but that's something that is really nice to explore and to see. And I love how all of your itineraries kind of start and end in a different spot. So you can do back to backs and yet experience a different culture in a different area. Oh yeah. And you could go on for so long. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted to, you could just stay and keep, keep going and see something different every single time. That's the beauty of Adventure Canada's um, expeditions is no two expeditions are the same. So, oh, yeah. so much to see. Absolutely. Fabulous. Yeah. You could stay on from July to October. Wouldn't that be a, a treat? Goodness. Yeah. Wonderful. And then in addition, we also have some Antarctica itineraries that we run. So um, for 2023, our itineraries are pretty full, but we will be releasing our 24 Antarctic season later this year. Mm, and then we, just bananas oh. that you filled up 2023 already. That's the pent up demand for cruising, isn't it? Everybody just wants to, to get out after being so long of not being able to go. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's just it. And we've also got um, another itinerary. And this one is also filling up quickly. Um, this is our warmer trip sailing from Costa Rica to Panama. So um, this one actually goes on a bit of a smaller sailboat. And so um, it is filling up relatively quickly, but we still have a few spots left if anyone's interested. Oh, that's great. And what are the dates on that one? Is it 2023 as well or 22? Yeah, we've got two departures in 2023. So okay. um, yeah. Nice. And then if you're looking to add to your Adventure Canada experience, we mm -hmm. offer optional enhancements on all departures in the Arctic, Atlantic Canada, and Europe. And um, we have mountain bike rentals that are a great way to experience different perspectives in new destinations and enjoy some fresh air off the ship. And they're rented daily, so no sign up prior to departure. Just uh, if you're feeling it that day, go on out and take, mm -hmm. a, take a leisurely bike ride. Nice. That's great. Yeah. And then if you're looking for something a little more adventurous, we have our kayak rental program. This program does require a sign up ahead of time and space is limited. So the earlier we, we receive applications, the better the chance of you joining. Mm -hmm. And uh, if this is something you're interested in, just please contact Kathleen and she'll be able to help you submit your application. Absolutely. Here's a souvenir for you to keep for years to come. It's our blue Adventure Canada jacket, which is complimentary with each voyage for every passenger. Wonderful. I have mine too, and it's actually perfect for springtime in Canada. I wear it actually into the fall as well. It's very good for Canadian weather, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, it looks great because it looks more, you know, waterproof and, and it's wind resistant too. Oh, exactly. It's mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> okay, and we have several promotions that can be taken advantage of when booking your trip. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our multi-trip promotion, which saves you an additional 10% when you book two or more Adventure Canada trips in the same calendar year. Mm -hmm. We also have that solo travelers program that I mentioned earlier with the cabins for no single supplement mm -hmm. fees. And travelers under the age of 30 can take advantage of our family-friendly program, which saves 30% on the birth rate for any of our Ocean Endeavor trips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So contact Kathleen to learn more about what promotions are available when you book, because there's something for everyone. Wonderful. And then right now, if you're interested in booking Iceland circumnavigation, you can save 15% on your trip when you book by May 31st, 2022 with our early booking bonus. Yeah. And that's a substantial discount. 15%. Wow. It's the best discount that we have all year. So the earlier you can book, the better. Absolutely. Okay, and then just really quickly, mm -hmm. I want to take a moment to address um, the, the C word COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all of our ships and operation practices undergo strict safety audits. We're committed to upholding the highest safety standards on all of our trips. And that's why we've implemented a COVID-19 action plan that will help keep you safe. So aspects of the plan do include mandatory vaccinations, mm -hmm. pre-board testing, health monitoring during the trip, and safe social distance practices throughout. Right. We're closely monitoring the situation and we do make changes to and further develop these protocols uh, leading up to your trip's departure in consultation with the World Health Organization and the Association of Arctic Expedition Cruise Operators. And also you can have peace of mind when you book your trip with our flexible booking policy. 
because in light of the current global state, we're offering flexible cancellation terms and transfers. Great. And then in addition, <laughs> Adventure Canada has been awarded a safe travel certificate by the World Travel and Tourism Council and the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario. What an honor. So, That's super. Yeah. yeah, this accreditation recommends Adventure Canada as a global leader in our adopted health and hygiene protocols. Um, so just again, to give you that extra peace of mind when you're booking. Great. Yeah, so Adventure Canada has a lot of repeat customers who love to travel with us again and again. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about traveling is meeting all the wonderful people that I cross paths with during my trips. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, I've made lifelong friends while traveling. Yes. And Kathleen, I'm sure you have too. I have, yes. I'm, uh, people would just not even know this, but I'm kind of talkative a little bit. So <laughs> I talk to anybody who's near me and yeah, you make friends and it's great. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's honestly so wonderful. And yeah, that's something that I'm really looking forward to when I set sail on my first Adventure Canada trip this summer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hopefully I'll get to meet you on board. So yes, wouldn't that be great to coordinate that? Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So thank you so much, Kathleen. I can confidently say that everyone is in the best hands when booking their expedition cruise with you. Um, everyone, Kathleen is extremely knowledgeable and will take the time to learn your needs and ensure that the right cruise is selected for you. So Working with her has been so wonderful and I hope you give her a call soon. So thank thanks so much you. again, Kathleen. Wow, thank you so much for the glowing recommendation. My goodness. Yes, uh, thank you. And thank you for putting all that together. I know it's a lot of work to do it and I greatly appreciate the time that you did um, to put all it together for us. Oh, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for the opportunity to present again. No problem. And I hope everybody has a great week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this week's cruise chat with Adventure Canada. Alina had some beautiful, beautiful pictures of the circumnavigation of Iceland. It is just a fabulously beautiful place to go to, and I can't wait to go someday. I think it's uh, definitely high up on my bucket list, and hopefully I'll be able to go um, within the next year or so. Who knows? Um, but if you're interested in learning more about Adventure Canada, be sure to drop me a line, info at travel.com and I'll make sure to get you all the information that you need and to get you on board. Next week, I'm going to be meeting with Maxine from Celebrity Cruises, and we're going to be doing just a little bit of a different format that I've been experimenting with. Um, we're just going to be having some dialogue and we're going to be talking. I believe we're going to be talking about the new ship Celebrity Beyond, a few of their itineraries as well, and just to look and see what they offer and how Celebrity does things. So again, thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can see all the new videos when they come out. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.